As an E6 roars over the camera under stormy skies, we turn back to Louisville and Nashville railroad operations and events from the 1940s through the 1970s with film from the company and several photographers. It's after World War II and the LNN is optimistic about its passenger service and has added new streamliners, Hummingbird and the Georgian in 1946. In 1947 and 48, they host General Motors' Train of Tomorrow. The original all-coach Hummingbird in its blue and silver livery. M1 Berkshire's 1987 and 1985 on the test tracks at the Lima Locomotive Works plant in April 1949. The Red River Viaduct near Ravenna on the EK division provides a stunning look at another M1 powered coal train. The viaduct is 2,200 feet long and 233 feet high. We get a look at not just l &N, but Cincinnati, Union Terminal's other tenants as well. Ride on a transfer cut across the river to De Courcy Yard. l &N is in the midst of dieselization. While many steam engines have been retired, others are still in service. M1 1968 is on South Louisville's famous slip track. Marion Eldridge takes us to Lexington, Kentucky in the 1940s and 50s in his 8mm film. In June 1956, the last run of the LNN No. 4 arrives at Lexington, leaving C&O's Louisville section of the George Washington to serve the city. Of course, that train operated on LNN's rails via a trackage rights agreement. Crossing the Salt River on October 7, 1952, we're aboard the Bloomfield Mixed that carried its few passengers and train crew in a wooden Jim Crow combine. M1 1962, excursion from Cincinnati to Ravenna, June 30th, 1956. At Louisville Union Station in the summer of 1958, Pensy E units are ready to depart with train 15, the southbound south wind for Florida. Newly found footage from the 1959 Centennial Steam Special. The sound we've added to this segment is real. Recorded that day. Sparta, Kentucky, summer of 1961. The daily southbound local freight from DeCourcy to Louisville is taking the siding for a meet with train four, the northbound Azalea. At East Louisville, operations of l and and C&O are controlled by MN Tower. As the local works behind the tower, a southbound freight arrives behind EMD and GE Power. A northbound light movement of GE and Alco Power arrives. The C&O George Washington arrives on its way to Ashland. A Street Tower where the westbound George Washington runs the Y before backing to Union Station. The combined northbound Pan American South Wind arrives from Nashville. It heads up Galbert Street before backing around the Y toward Union Station.
At Bowling Green, Kentucky in the mid-1970s, the southbound Floridian makes a stop for passengers with northbound light engines appearing in the distance. The engines pass by, pick up a cut of cars, and depart south. The northbound Louisville section of the auto train. In Nashville, Radner's old roundhouse hosts a visit by the l &N Historical Society in 1993. South Louisville shops, a parting look. Frankfurt and Cincinnati Railroad during the 1930s, 40s, and 50s, when the FNC accommodated several excursions of the Cincinnati Railroad Club. For more LNN action, be sure to see Reflections of the LNN Volume 1 and look for Volume 3 in the future with coverage of Nashville and other areas in the 1970s and 80s. In 1960, FNC donated their Brill M55-1 rail car to the Kentucky Railway Museum. For the best in vintage railroading on DVD, log on to heronrail.com. <laughs>